Mentorship. Sherwin Owen writes a book called Shortcut to Success. And in there, he references and he makes the statement, mentorship is how you learn life. Mentors are living proof that it can be done. Mentors also help you translate vision into reality. Their mistakes are your teachers. Their suggestions are your commands. Hi everybody, it's so good that you are with us today. Thanks for joining us. Today's message is going to be an encouragement to you. I know that you're going to be super blessed. And I want us to today, just to op- as we open up in prayer, remember that we are doers of the word. So everything that you're going to hear today, implement it in your life. Take note of what we're going to be preaching about because we don't want you to week in and week out hear the word, but we don't apply the word because nothing will happen. Nothing will change if we don't apply the word of God. Let us bow our heads. Let us pray. Father, this morning or today, we want to thank you for being present in our lives. Thank you, Lord, that you are God of nearby, that every day that we can come to you and your word says as we draw close to you, you draw close to us. And as we today just draw close to you, draw close to your word, we thank you for your anointing. Thank you that the anointing destroys yokes. It lifts burdens. And thank you, Father God, that as we listen to your word today, that we did not come here today to listen to the words of man, but to get a word from the throne room of heaven. And we thank you that your word is carried by your anointing to the hearts of each and every person that hears your word today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, family, today's message, I titled this message, and I battled with the title a little bit, but I eventually settled on trials, tests, and temptations. We all go through these trials, we all go through tests, and we all go through temptations. And in the Bible, in fact, if you read the word, you'll find these three words are interchangeable. So a trial, a test, or a temptation, really what is a temptation? A temptation is a test. And so the Word of God speaks about trials, speaks about temptations, and speaks about tests. And it even has an example, which we'll speak about a little bit later on, of how Jesus went through temptations and trials in the wilderness. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let us start from the beginning, where we want to really look at the purpose of trials. Why do we go through stuff in our life? Have you ever been to in a place where... You just go through stuff and it seems like when one thing comes, it just gets followed by another and another. And it's almost like when it rains, it storms. Everything comes down at the same time. Now the Bible tells us that trials and temptations will come. Jesus, in fact, says in the book of John, it says, Here on earth you will have many trials. You will have many sorrows. But he says, Take heart. Because I, Jesus, have overcome the world. So John 16.33 really is not a bad confession. But it's almost a reality check that through in life we will go through stuff. And so trials and temptations or troubles, it's not a sign of past failure. But rather, when you go through trials, it's a sign of future victory that's around the corner. And many of us... We give up in the times of trials, but we need to learn to persevere and to push through. Also, just want to say this, when we, when we go through trials, when things go wrong in our life, it's also no evidence of sin present in our life. Now, I know that when we do sin, and we all do, that it opens up the door to the devil and he can take advantage of us. But what the point that I want to bring across here is that when you go through stuff, it doesn't mean you've done something necessarily wrong. To attract all of this trials that comes your way. Because if that was true, then Jesus, having gone through temptations and tests, would have done something wrong to attract these temptations and these tests. But we know the Bible says that Jesus was found without sin. And so trials, temptations and tests comes along and it comes along to everybody. You know, there's not one person that's listening to this message that cannot identify with a really tough time that they've gone through, a test that they had to face, 
or temptation that they needed to overcome. We all go through it. You see, you cannot choose the trial often that you go through, but you can choose your response. Let me say that again. You cannot perhaps choose the trial that you go through, but you can choose your response. Our foundational scripture that I want to really just bring in here is found in James chapter 1. The purpose of trials and tests is so that our faith can grow and so that our patience can grow. It says this, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Say this, say the testing of my faith produces patience. When the Bible speaks about knowing that when your faith is tested, it produces patience, it's a knowing, it's not a head knowledge, it's not an intellectual understanding, but rather it's a trust, it's a belief, it's an expectation of your experience. It's the knowing that God is going to come through for you. So how does faith come? According to the Word of God, faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. How does patience get produced? Patience get produced when your faith is tested. You see, trials, the way I look at it, is trials is almost like going to gym. You know, you go to gym to develop your body and to, to be healthy. And the more time you spend at gym, the heavier weights you lift, the more your body develops, the more your muscles grow. And it's the same with trials. The more trials that you go through, and I'm not for one minute suggesting the stronger you are, or the more trials you go through, the stronger you, you become. But trials gives you an opportunity to exercise your faith and your faith grows stronger. Just like you exercise muscles to grow stronger and develop it, so too you develop your faith by overcoming the trials that you may face and go through. So the same faith that you and I have in trusting and believing God for our salvation, trusting Him for breakthrough in our life or healing or financial breakthrough, the same faith that you and I stand on when we go through stuff in our life. I want to say this. I've heard this from Pastor Alan Bagg once and it really had an impact on my life. That we do not apply faith whenever we go through stuff. Because faith is not your spare will. Faith is your steering wheel in life. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. A lot of us when we go through stuff, we apply faith. You know, I'm going through a hard time, so I go to my, my reserves and I take out some faith and I apply faith. That is not how faith is to be used. We must live by faith. The just will live by faith. And so, patience is so important to be developed in your life. Because really think about it. Patience is one of the nine fruits of the Spirit. The nine fruits of the Spirit found in Galatians 5. Faith is also the first evidence of the presence of love found in 1 Corinthians 13. The Bible says love is patient and kind and so forth. Patience is also one of the clothing pieces found in Colossians 3 verse 12 that we need to wear. It says clothe yourself with the following. Patience is one of the clothing pieces. Patience does not have a time frame. I'm not patient for two hours or for a, a week or for a month. I've been patiently waiting for 10 years. You see, patience is a virtue. It's a characteristic. You can be patient for 10 days and on the 11th day, before your breakthrough, you give up. My friend, you've not been patient because patience is not a time frame. It's a characteristic and a virtue. The Bible says having done all to do, we need to stand. So when you've done all according to the word of God 
and it seems like nothing's happening, we need to stand upon the Word of God. Stick with your confessions of faith. Confess the Word of God. Read the Word out loud because faith comes by hearing. Thank God for delivering you and for things that He's brought you through in the past. But we need to stick with our confessions of faith. Faith and patience are power twins. And so Abraham waited 25 years from when he heard the promises of God till the fulfillment. Joseph, 13 years from when he had his first dream to when he became the governor of Egypt. 13 years passed. So patience is not a time frame. Then you look at David, the first time when the prophet Samuel came and anointed David to be king. He was a teenager. He was the Bible. Bible scholar says he was in the region of between 8 and 15 years because the Bible says he was in his youth. But he became the king of Israel at the age of 30. There was a huge time difference. The trials and tribulations may slow you down, but do not let it stop you. Stand up, face your giants, confess and speak to your problems. The Bible says speak to the mountain and it will be removed. And tell them giants you are coming down. Speak to your situations. And so be bold knowing that God has already guaranteed you victory. The Word of God says in James chapter 1, 4, it says, let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. What does this mean? This means that patience has a work to do. When you patiently endure a trial and you see victory, you are then equipped to overcome a similar situation or a similar problem in future. Because now you know how to deal with this. You know how to stand. You know that your God has already brought you through something similar. So you will do it again. And so patience has a perfect work. You become more resilient. You become more confident when you overcome trials. You now have a track record. You've got a testimony. You won't be fearful and you'll know how to stand on the word of God. So we know that the attacks come from the devil. We know that he is the enemy. But he is defeated family. The Bible says he's like a roaring lion. The devil is not a lion. He's like a roaring lion. He likes to make noise. But we serve Jesus Christ. And the Bible says he is the lion of Judah. And so Jesus understands that we go through tests. The Bible says in Hebrews 4, verse 15, it says, This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he has faced all the same testings or temptations than we do, yet he was found without sin. You see, Jesus understands when we go through stuff. He understands. He's our high priest. And you will recall in the Bible, in the book of Luke, it's also recorded in, in the other Gospels, when Jesus was tempted by the devil. And there are three things that the devil is going to want to always attack you with. Number one, he's going to want you to, I, to question your identity in God. The first temptation, the first thing the devil came to the Jesus with, he said to Jesus, if you are the Son of God, command the stone to become bread. If you are the Son of God, he wanted Jesus to question his identity in God. Number two, the devil wants you to question God's authority. He says and he makes promises and he says to, to, to Jesus, after showing him all the kingdoms of the earth, he's, the devil says to Jesus, all authority I will give to you if you bow down and worship me. And then the third thing that the devil wants to do, he wants you to question God's willingness to do it for you. What do I mean by this? Often we believe that God 
will perform miracles. He will heal someone else. He will, he will, he will come through for someone else in their financial breakthrough. But we often doubt whether God will do it for us. And so the devil comes to Jesus and he, he sets him um, upon a pinnacle in Jerusalem. And he says to, to Jesus, he says, throw yourself off this pinnacle, off this temple. And then he quotes scripture to Jesus. He says, because the word says that God will send his angels that you won't even bash your foot against a stone. And then Jesus responded to him and says, you will not test the Lord your God. And so Jesus comes and he overcomes the devil and all the temptations with the word of God. And our weapon against these temptations, our weapon against our trials, it's the word of God. And so the devil cannot stand against the word of God. Now we see in the book of Luke that when the devil tempted Jesus with these three things, turn the stone into bread. I'll give you all the kingdoms of heaven if you bow down and worship me and then throw yourself off this temple. After he came with these three temptations, the Bible tells us in Luke, he left Jesus for a more opportune time. Family, you in one of three stages in your life. You're either in the middle of a trial, you are heading for a trial, or you've just come out of a trial. You will find yourself in one of those three places. Because you see, the devil left Jesus for a more opportune time. And so when you face storms and you come through storms, know that there will be more that you will need to face. And this is not a negative confession. Remember the words of Jesus. In this life you will have trouble, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Embrace your trials. Understand that your trials will make you stronger. Understand that trials are not there to break you. It will try and break you. But God is with you. He promised you, even if you go through the valley of the shadow of death, I am with you. Choose to view your trials differently. Count it all joy, my brethren, when you go through trials of different kind. Because when your faith is tested, your patience will be developed. God bless you. I trust you enjoyed this message. And that you will grow from strength to strength. Amen. At this point in time, I want you just to bow your heads where you are right now. Close your eyes. Because you see, you've got a choice. You can either face trials and temptations, tests on your own. Or you can do it with Jesus. The Bible says, cast your cares onto Him for He cares for you. Scripture tells us that we need to cast our burdens to the Lord. And He shall sustain us. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. You see, you become righteous when you accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. You, in fact, are the righteousness of God. You have the righteousness of God. And He says in Psalm 55, 22, You will never let the righteous be forsaken. So by accepting Jesus today, you become the righteousness of God. So with your eyes closed and your head bowed, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. It's a prayer of salvation. And if you're not saved, pray this prayer. And it's important that you pray it out loud. With the mouth one confesses to salvation. With your heart you believe to righteousness. So say this. Say, Dear Father God, Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for me. That he paid the penalty of sin and death on my behalf. Today I accept you, Jesus, as my personal Lord and Savior. Come into my life and save me. Now because I've done this, I'm now born again. Now my friend, if you prayed that very simple prayer and you invited Jesus into your heart, we do not want you to walk this journey alone. We want to walk with you. So contact us. Send us a message via Facebook. 
Use our WhatsApp number which is on the screen right now. But make contact with us. Allow us to serve you. Allow us to pray with you. Every night, 5 o'clock, when we as a family, a spiritual family, and as well as our family here at home, when we pray and we intercede for our country, for our leaders, for our spiritual leaders, join us. Become part of our family. One of the devil's strategies are to isolate people from other believers. Come and join our family. Be part of what we do as we make a difference in people's lives. God bless you. I look so forward to hearing from you. So I just want to thank you for, for listening to this message, but also to thank you for supporting us as a ministry. We cannot put messages out there. It's easy to give into the gospel. You may not be able to go out there and, and do things that perhaps you want to do, but we as a ministry can. We have an initiative coming up now shortly where we're going to go out to an orphanage and we're just going to go and deliver clothes and food and, and just help where we can. And it's your generous giving that allows ministries like ours to be able to go and do this. So thank you for your support. God loves you. The Word of God says, never grow tired of doing good. And we certainly will never grow tired of doing good and showing the love of Jesus.